What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. So today in front of me I have an Ender V2 and the brand new Ender S1. So what I'm gonna do for you guys today is compare the two to help you make a decision and what you might make, want, excuse me, what you might want to choose. So we'll start with the Ender V2. They made some improvements from the Pro by doing things like giving you a drawer, which everybody was 3D printing. They also went ahead and put bell tensioners on, again, which everybody was either buying or potentially 3D printing themselves. Um, they also went ahead and upgraded to a 422 board. So it's a 32-bit board with a bootloader built in to alleviate flashing firmware issues. Uh, a few of the main things they've done with the new S1 here um, that I like personally is that they did a dual Z. So we'll just kind of flip these around so Jaren can get you a little close up. They went ahead and ran dual Z on them. Whereas if you take a look at the Ender V2s and the old Pros, all they had was a single Z, which is totally upgradable. And we will go through some of the pros and cons of all the things that we have in front of us here today. Um, dual Z, there's no cons about that. That's great. You never have to worry about sag in the X gantry. Okay. One of the other things they've changed, the original 3D printer, all the Enders, from the Ender 2, the Ender 3, all the way up the line, even if you look at like the Ender 5 Plus, they run these Creality plastic extruders here. And it's a Bowden tube machine. Uh, pushing from the extruder through all this tube here. Now what they've done on the S1 is they've went ahead and made it direct drive. They also went ahead and put a CR touch on there which is the equivalent of a BL touch, um, which is another nice feature to have. It does come at a cost though. One of the main things they've changed too on the S1 versus the uh, V2 and the Pros and all the other ones is in the past, they've ran all this wiring back down to your motherboard, which I still like because it's very convenient, it's very simplistic. It's less to have to worry about when something goes wrong. So I still really like that about the original version. But what they've done with the S1 to make it very convenient, what we'll do is we'll ask Jaren to zoom in a little here for us. You've got your thermistor um, and everything is just on a breakout board now. So your heater cartridge is here, your thermistor runs over to the other side here, which I'll turn that around too. As you can see, everything's a quick plug here. Um, some of them are uh, the mini JST style. So that, that is something you're gonna have to keep in mind when purchasing this. The fans are gonna be, um, they're not gonna be as, as, as much in stock as say the V2 is. Um, even when a V2 fan for the V2 with the right length isn't in stock, you can take a JST2 pin to any fan that's 24 volt, go ahead and crimp on the ends, or when it comes to a fan, yes, you can solder. Uh, a lot of times you can peel back the label and solder to the pads that are on the, the board for the fan. So I really do like that too. Um, but eventually, this is a newer printer. These, these connectors will be more readily available. So will all the fans. So it's a few things to bear in mind. It is direct drive, which I like the fact that it's direct drive out of the box. I tend to prefer it because I prefer print with a lot of TPU myself. So another feature they've actually added now too is now because we have like this, I won't call it CAN bus because it's not, but that similar style of CAN bus style setup where like on a CAN bus, it's just four wires that run up to your printer head to a board where they've done the same thing and they've just used this ribbon cable here. Oh, and it's clipped right in. So yeah, it does come out there. I'm not gonna pull it right out because it is actually set into the clip here. So I'll just pop that back in. Close it up. So they have actually went ahead and done a few extra things by doing that. Um, so you'll have to keep that in mind. Again, they kept the bell tensioners. You still get a drawer uh, as well as the newer style screen. So another feature that's changed, uh, your Z motors have a breakout board. So we're, we have breakout boards here for the second Z 
Whereas in the past, uh, if you ran a second Z, you'd use a Y splitter. So it'd be two into one. Um, one of the main things they've switched on this printer is they've went from the glass bed back to what the original enders used to come with, similar um, to a magnetic spring steel. But what they've done is if you look here, they've got the polycarbonate build tack on, on the top, but you could always just flip it over use some glue stick on the steel side, but you'll definitely need to use a few layers of glue stick. So that's another feature. It comes with a spring steel sheet with polycarbonate. Uh, not to say you couldn't grab yourself a little sheet of PEI for the other side if you'd like, or a piece of PEX to stick on the other side. That would still be an option. So they did do away with the glass bed with the S1. Um, Another feature they added as well. So it could basically everything everybody really wanted. Uh, they added a filament runout sensor as well, as you can see here. Um, they redesigned the spool. Uh, it's more like the um, spools that come on the Ender Max and the CR Smarts and stuff. So and it's kind of nice that they integrated the filament sensor to just screw into it so it's right in place where it should be. Um, yeah, with that being said, guys, I think we've went over most of the cosmetic features, now we'll just have to take a look and see what they did electronically. So there is one more thing I did forget to mention when I was discussing the Dual Z and that it's just got the belt to keep everything timed correctly so you don't get any sag varying from side to side. So that was one feature I did forget to mention. Now moving on to the difference in the electronics. Creality has made a whole new board for this and it is, I have to read it, sorry guys, it's the CRFDX version 2451. So that's the new board. So I'll say it again, guys, just so you know, in case you're writing it down. CRFDX V2451. So that's their new board. Um, definitely because of the cabling systems and stuff, they've had to integrate some new stuff. So it does come with a new board. Um, now let's go over the differences between the two and why you might choose the S1 over the V2 or say maybe even an Ender Pro. Now, for guys who are real hobbyists and like to tinker, take things apart, uh, upgrade, this would definitely be the base for you because then you have control over what drive goes on the head. Um, maybe you want to even change your motors or run a slim line with a direct drive or a micro Swiss or you want to add a linear rail kit. This is the perfect platform for upgrading. Whereas say you're a guy who, you know, you just want to 3D print, uh, maybe you have it, it's doing something for one of your other hobbies or something like that where the S1 gives you the full package already done. Um, being dual Z, direct drive, easy to change out thermistor and heater cartridges without having to run back to the board like you do in the older versions of the Ender. Um, having the spring steel sheet for the PLA guys who just want to pop their prints off right away. Uh, it comes with all those features uh, as well as Ease of use, um, you know, it's got a nice little lever here, getting your filament in and out, easy to roll in with the gear being here so you can spin it in by hand. Um, so they've really, really kind of took everything that everybody was doing to these and put their own run on it. And it's still very affordable. Uh, you can't beat the price of an Ender 3, uh, whether it's an S1 or a V2, they're priced to sell, they're great machines you'll always have parts availability for both machines. So whether you're a hobbyist that just wants to tinker and upgrade, or you're a guy who just wants to print, both of these printers have what you need. And the last thing I'd like to let you guys know is the screens, they're identical. There's nothing different here. So if you had a V2 or you had an S1 and your screen failed before the, or after the warranty date, you'd be able to just go ahead and grab an Ender V2 screen, wouldn't matter. We'd have them in stock and available. And with that being said, guys, I hope this was very helpful. You got a lot of information out of this. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I hope this video really helps you guys decide whether you want to tinker or you just want to print. Um, they both, again, they both print great out of the box. This one will fill, fulfill a lot more needs for people who just want to print without tinkering. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Leave some comments in the bottom on videos you want to see. We got lots more to come. See you in the next video.
hey guys, don't forget to check out our forum, 3dprintingspace.com, where there's all kinds of technical videos and everything 3D.